Greetings, everyone. I'm here on this beautiful sunny day in Southern California, and I'm going to do a demonstration of the sunlit still life. Uh, before I begin actual painting, actually painting the still life, I'm doing the most uh, compelling creative part of it, which is arranging the setup. And um, you can see I have a collection of objects here on the table and um, I'm going to go about showing you how I arrange the setup um, to tell a beautiful visual story. You can think about um, uh, this is a starting point, you know, what is it that draws you to paint? And for me, a lot of the sub of my favorite subject matter is florals, particularly roses. I also love peonies and hydrangeas. Um, and I'm grateful to have some homegrown roses here that are perfectly timed for the demo. Um, I'm also thinking about the fall. This is a pumpkin I got in Oregon that I brought home with me. Uh, do I want to have some kind of a fall theme, you know, with the apple? I'm thinking about the sizes of my objects. I want to create a lot of uh, variety in those. Um, I'm thinking about um, the circumference of the objects. You know, these are pretty similar in circumference, but they have a different height and a different color. I'm thinking about opacity. Um, you know, this is one of my favorite things to paint. Um, it casts beautiful um, shadows and um, the flowers tend to drape really nicely in it. Um, I don't know if I'll use that today or not. I'm thinking of the fact that blues often don't um, display as well in sunlight as they do in a cool, overcast light, um, so I'm probably not going to paint something, you know, have too much blue. Um, I'm thinking about um, the cloth that I have here. Uh, you know, I've painted a lot of still life with this busier uh, pattern. Uh, that's compelling. Um, you know, do I want it to be warm, you know, and, and create a different kind of mood? Um, I'm thinking of the background. Obviously, in this case, I've got, you know, very deep space um, going back into my yard, but I've also uh, shortened the visual space or created a narrower depth by, I've got this folding screen back here. You know, maybe I want to hang a cloth from it. Um, but mid-ground, foreground, mid-ground, background, that factors very prominently in my decisions and um, where I place these objects relative to that um, sequence of planes. Um, also, and most importantly, I'm thinking about uh, the temperature of the light and I'm thinking about the direction of the light and how it will change over time, which is no different than any other plein air painting experience. So. You know, there's rarely do these still lifes that I set up kind of happen uh, naturally and quickly. I usually have to do a lot of, of arranging and rearranging, adding, mostly subtracting objects. And, um, and that's uh, what I'm starting with here today. So let's see where we end up uh, once I get this underway. I've continued to add additional refinements to the setup. Um, is this going to read from the, you know, the left to the right, top to bottom? Is it going to be a square, vertical, or horizontal composition? I really like um, horizontal compositions, and um, I've got the preponderance of energy kind of to the left in this setup, but I wanted to add a little bit of sparkle, so I moved the perfume bottle to the right. Okay, here we go. Having already decided that I wanted this to be horizontal, that I'd, I'd like this to be horizontal, and also just to move things along here as my flowers are fading, uh, where do I place my focal point in the rectangle? Uh, I already know that I want that white rose to be the focal point, and of course I don't want it in the center, and I've got a shadow 
um, coming out this way and it's going to be moving this way but um, for the time being it's here and I've also got these things more in the distant background um, and I, I like that I've also got the dark of the panel back here so I think my focal point is going to be about right here and I've got this little uh, perfume bottle here that adds a little sparkle a little bit of the ribbon but this is going to be dark right here and the roses are draping fading actually quite rapidly um, I've got some linear elements here and then this back here you ask yourself I want to make this a two value uh, thumbnail you know, these are obviously white elements in the background, but for the purposes of my painting, they're gonna be darker. This is all gonna be dark. This is dark. So now you can already see that I'm linking my shadows here. Got some fun things going on here. I've also used tape to tape some of this stuff down because, um, because the wind is blowing. I'm going to outline this so that I remember that that's where I want my hardest edge, my lightest light. I've got stuff going on here. There's a real intense saturated red, but the counterpoint is over here. Uh, what's happening over here in this space? Well, maybe I'm going to add a little bit of colorful sparkle. Uh, I'm not sure. The, the line of the cloth is here. Um, this is all very dark, but I've got a little bit of a flowy cloth. So once I get that roadmap, I'm pretty close to ready to go. And um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing this in. I like to use a line drawing. And from there, I'm going to be working on uh, blocking in with local color and light and shadow. So here we go. And I can choose any color uh, that I want. Um, starting with my focal point, that white rose is just really fantastic. So there's a lot of emphasis over here, but I've got this counterpoint of this little perfume bottle back here. And I'm not thinking about things, I'm thinking about light and dark love this shadow over here and because the light is changing so quickly i really want to get moving here i'm not going to spend a lot of time on the line drawing itself um, just kind of a general placement of elements i've got these i'm going to make this visually even though it goes way up i'm going to just pull it down a little bit just so because i want to get that feeling of these long strands back here that add a nice linear counterpoint. And there's so many roses you can't see the base of that thing. There's another picture that I just left there. I kind of like it. Um, and then this drapey swirly cloth in here. And already I'm, I'm kind of feeling a nice um, lyrical mood here. I'm going to go ahead and um, clamp this down so that it's not moving around so much. You know, it's so much work to do this. Um, it, it's just a, a ton of work, but uh, let's see, let me try it up here. In the end, it's uh, really worth it. I'm always grateful that I did it, just like daily exercise. I'm always grateful. Oh, I really like that perfume bottle, and I know that based on what the sun is doing, there's going to be a cast shadow right here, so I already like that. Okay, that's actually just about enough to get started. Um, the edge of this, this uh, screen in the background is here, and I like the fact that this space is different than this one. Whoop, whoop. Well, that clamp didn't work very well. I think it's okay, just like this. I've got, I'm gonna just hold it.
That's part of the pitfall of plein air painting is um, uh, you just never know how things are, the wind and the, everything's gonna move stuff around. But I'm gonna block this in, and usually I start with my focal point, but for some, there's no rhyme or reason per se. I just want to cover this entire surface. And this is why I really don't care at all about the, the, the color of the, the surface that I use. Now, I know that this is a very warm light and you're asking why on earth would I start with this, but it's a, it's a cool color that I'm putting in the shadows. And let's go ahead and get that center warmth in there. And boy, oh boy, is it light and beautiful right out here. And that's kind of cold, but uh, I can warm it up. Let me warm it up. That's, that feels kind of like the right value for the time being. Let me go ahead and get these. Uh, there's, that's kind of a nice, cool pink, not perfect on the, um, outer leaf here where it comes, I can see it. There's some nice blues in here. Um, let's get a nice pink going here. Where else is that? It's over here. And it's over here. Okay, let's get that red rose in. And uh, it's a challenge here because I don't want it to be too dominant. You know, it's got um, a lot of nice saturated warms, but I, I really don't want it to be too dominant. Where else do I find that color? It's right, let's see, I've got this pink rose. I've got to pull it down a little bit. Um, this other one is about right here. That's a little strong, but I'm not doing a, um, you know, a specific, portrait of each flower because I would never have the time to do that. I'm thinking compliments here. I'm going to put in this shadow, I'm going to put a little bit of violet. Um, let's see, there's some violet over here. What's the light? There's the piece of light that I was needing. There's a really nice um, saturated bright orange pink flower here. That looks kind of nice. Um, what about these? some of these dark pinks here? There's, I see a little bit there. I'll put the dark pink in. There's a dark pink here. And there's another one here. This um, kind of neutrally white, a nondescript, is really fun to paint once you get into it. Um, but uh, getting those first colors in is a challenge because you have to just go pick the closest thing you think you see and then go from there. I'm gonna go back to this green here and kind of carve around because there's some nice space in here. I made this pink a little too close, so I'm almost gonna use this green like a little bit like a, an eraser, really. There's quite a bit going on here. This uh, warm pink is actually up here, which is good. It gives a little bit of an upward pull dark oh that's too dark um let's see a dark pink dark pink dark that's not quite right but i'm i'm just really focusing on um the value and the light which that's I, I grabbed the wrong one that's okay i'll work that in kind of start to develop the shape there i really want a nice bright pink right here. And that, of course, will, will change and stand out uh, when I uh, start to pull in the background. OK, 
Okay, let's start start to pull in some of this um, background here. I just happened to have a nice, um, it's a little dark, but I happened to have a nice color in, in my hand for this cast shadow. I'm gonna get that in quickly and it goes right into the vase here. What else is going on in that base? There's some light shining through it and it sure does look blue to me. So let's grab some nice, rich blue, dark blue. And just kind of uh, get, get that going. Okay, what's happening in the background? It's, um, it's a very, um, I kind of like that, um, where this, Oh, that works. You know, that was that was my shadow color for the cast shadow. This vertical plane is going to be a little bit warmer because it's not um, doesn't have the um, quite the influence of the sky. And so let me just get that back down here. This plane here which is basically the shadow cast by this um, screen in the background. Let's see, where does that screen end? It ends about right there. Let me carry it on it. I'm gonna remember I lowered my little background base. I'm gonna fill this in and boy, I can sure feel the pastel. Whoop, that's it, it's gone. Okay, what about this light thing in the background? I'm gonna make it, or this light vase. Let me, um, you know, that's white, but obviously that's the way white looks when it's in a shadow. Okay, moving on here. What, what's going on here? This has quite a bit of, lot, bit of orange. It has quite a bit of yellow. I'll refine it. There's a nice, bright, fresh, light yellow right here. I'm going to grab that while I see it, while I have it in my hand. I'm going to use it to um, pull some yellows over here. There's a yellow here. This back, this tabletop is very light and it's a little on the um, pink side, but but it's it's a nice thick one and I can get a lot of mileage with it. So I'm going to go ahead and, and you can see I covered up my perfume bottle there. Um, but I can, I can restate it. I'm going to make this a little closer to, I'm going to throw some yellow in here. Pull a little bit there. Okay, now what? This background is quite dark, but I'd like to make it warm. I really don't want it to look cold. It's a sunny day. This is a little warmer than I want it. So what do I do about that? I'm gonna um, use a little bit of, how about we take a little bit of green, dark olive, throw that in there. Now I feel like I've got, and I'm gonna get that, I've gotta get that perfume bottle in just for the, my own edification here. Let's see, where am I gonna place it? Cast shadow there. That's kind of a nice space, but I don't want this space and this space to be the same. So uh, placing that appropriately in the composition is, is really important. Okay, um, and then of course we have the red ribbon here. And I'm gonna get a, kind of weave that through. It comes over here and over here. And we have a bunch of flowers, kind of flower stems here. That kind of breaks the space up a little bit. Not sure how those will factor in. Uh, 
Um, let's restate this. I'm not sure if I'm going to put those back there or not. Um, squinting down, you know, there's a lot of, you know, maybe a little nice light feels good. Um, some light coming through here. Okay, I'm feeling pretty darn good about the beginning of this block in here. Um, you know, as you glance from this sunny still life to this, back to your palette, your eyes really have to work hard. And um, I don't worry about that too much. You know, I just get started and just let the beauty speak and um, see how uh, we can continue to refine this and uh, the great privilege and honor of sitting in the midst and majesty of such beauty. Okay, I'm gonna continue on here because the light's changing fast and, um, and as things move, um, sometimes you have to make adjustments. Um, this, this rose up here um, is quite a bit higher and that's good because I, I want there to be a air and separation. So I'm gonna put that in. There's also this sweet little um, daisy that's, actually, you know, this goes, I'm gonna, this really has kind of moved around and oh my gosh, this, the, um, the uh, sun just went behind a cloud. We'll work with it. And this little sweet little daisy back here, I really kind of like. And and I'll use um, my background warm, carve around it so it's not too distracting. And um, while I'm at it, I've got a nice little stem coming in here. There's some linear stuff going on. But the first thing I'm gonna do is um, refine this rose. And um, uh, I've got some light. Oh, that's a little too green. I need to, and, and with the light all of a sudden changing, some of those cools get really pronounced. Um, but let me get this, and I need to make it even cooler. Really quite, and that's nice. That kind of works in our favor right here, right now. Where these petals um, point to the sky, it's quite warm. Um, and I'm really just trying very hard to think of large shapes and warm and cool transitions. And so, and I'm also thinking about the, um, I'm gonna adjust my umbrella here because I'm not able kind of blinding me. I've got to be able to see, not stare into. There's a nice leaf shape here and the light shining through it even more. Let's get some light shining through that leaf and make sure and I'm really just looking at the outside edge here. And then I'm gonna come back in, carve some petals back. Because you know, everything has an outside character and an inside character, and that accounts for the likeness of everything. This is very warm down here. And um, is that, that's very warm. I, I, I just by pure accident happened to grab just the right uh, value and color. Doesn't, doesn't always happen, that's for sure. I'm gonna go back and make these a little more blue. 
you know, these center pieces of this rose are, it's almost, um, it's got kind of a purplish cast. I want to make, whoops, that was a green dirty finger I stuck in there. Um, you know, that this actually works quite well for the notion of the complement. Um, there's a lighter value coming across here to kind of define the rose. I'm not pressing quite as hard because I want to get a little bit of uh, just a little definition, but, but not a lot. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on inside, but I'm, I'm going to try to be really careful to not overstate it and keep squinting. It's, boy, it's really warm as it goes down deep in that rose. Really, really warm. And generally, you know, anything like that, whether it's, you know, the nostrils on somebody or a hairline or, um, uh, you know, the interior of, of a rose, um, it really, really needs to be warm. And you know, take your best guess here, and you can always make adjustments, but there's no possible way to um, stare at your palette and then stare at your subject and come up with something easily. You, you have to just get right in there and, um, and then make adjustments along the way. You know, where is the lightest part of this rose? It's really because the sun is starting to come from over here. It's really light on this side and on the top. There's no uh, light down here. So I kind of like that. Um, I really even want to darken this up even a little bit more. And maybe even get into the some of the orange here just to try to bring the value down but still have it read yellow. Um, when I feel, and I'm holding pastels in my hand, I've got them in my tray over here. I have this compulsion to keep picking up stuff out of my box rather than looking at what I have in my hand. Um, but that's the way it is. That's what I just, it's just what I do. I don't, everyone has their own kind of weird habit. Let's get the light shining through that leaf back there. That's, that's kind of nice. And, you know, this was just a dark. I was kind of anxious to um, carve around that rose with a line and a shape that was believable for um, the character. I've got a camellia leaf in here. Um, let's go ahead and get that going. And camellia, the camellia leaf is actually pretty, pretty cool and dark than compared to some other kinds of leaves. That kind of ends up being a nice counterpoint there because I've got quite a bit of warms going. Let me get that nice little dark camellia bud in there. Adjusting my, adjusting my uh, umbrella pastels I was holding in my hand have fallen on the ground. I'll pick those up. I'm sure I'm not a, a very dainty painter. I wish I was. Okay, I'm just going to put that there for now. The, the edge of these leaves have, um, they're catching the light nicely here. Um, where they face the light, it's cooler. Where else do I see that? I actually see it right over here. I don't want the linear element to be too awfully linear though because then it looks like I'm just drawing random lines. I want them to make sense but um, let's see 
a little definition there. Um, I'm, that's all I'm going to do for now. Now where am I going to move on? Let's move on to... Let's... Uh, one thing that's kind of important to me um, once in a while is to brush all this together and it feels kind of watercolory, which I love. I love that medium. And um, it removes some of the excess pigment and it also unifies my shapes. I've got a lot of pigment on here. I don't pay attention to hard soft. I just want the color. The, the significance with the hard soft is that the harder the pastel, the less pigment it will impart to the surface. The softer, you can get really loaded. Okay, let's move on to the um, pink rose here. And I'm going to start with, let me do a little drawing of, this, of the most significant part, which kind of defines what this thing is. Okay, that would be the light side and it's not nearly light enough, but it was a good, good start. Squinting down, squinting, squinting, squinting down. And now we get into the non-lit part. So I'm going to um, try my best to not overstate that's where the center is. And again, I'm not doing a specific portrait of the rose itself. I am um, No, that's too, that's not, that's too, there we go. Maybe that'll work. You know, there's a trade-off. We want, I want to work quickly and I want to establish quickly what I'm seeing, but there is a time when I also have to be, be more accurate. And boy, that's really a judgment call. You know, I'm going to take this color and not press down so hard. I don't want to con conflict with this light that I've got going on this petal, which incidentally has quite a bit of um, kind of a light lavender blue. I can see that it's starting to take shape now. You know, when do you just keep, you just keep going until you don't know what you're doing anymore. And then you go, I've got to get to the thing that I know. What do I know? I've got to go to something that, that, I, that, I, that I know. Um, I'm going to carve back. I've got tons of pastels in my hand now. Let me carve around that and down here. Okay, that's feeling pretty good. This is way too close now this whole thing has moved but maybe I don't mind that I'll see I'm gonna work on this this uh, peachy um, this peachy uh, David Austin thing here which is just so beautifully showing um, and just what nature gives us in the way it's got some beautiful violets here as it as it faces the sky, but then where is the nice light? There's a, it, and this needs to be warmer and more orange. But for now, maybe I'll blend those together to see what I get in the way of the light side. And I'm squinting down in the transition, it goes from warm and it goes to cool. And then in the center, back to warm, but it's also going to be darker. So I can, you know, and maybe I have to exaggerate to, so that I can see the form, so I can really see the form. Maybe, maybe that's what I need to do. 
you know, nobody's going to be holding up a light meter to your painting and saying you didn't quite capture the temperature of, of that particular object. Um, you just want to make it uh, believable based on what you're seeing and keep, keep, an, keep the mood, keep the feeling and the mood going. Okay, uh, I don't want this to get too busy in here. I'm gonna go back in because I do see on the outer edge of some of these, I see some some violet here. Gosh, it's wonderful the way compliments work. Okay, um, this needs to be, um, let's see what this color is. Oh, that's, that's actually a great neutral. Let's see, where can I, that's a great one for up here for all the stuff going on in the center without competing or without pulling it into the light. Um, I do want to, going back to this, I'm gonna pull in some, just to give, give a little bit more interest here. I don't want it to look too much like a bullseye. And you know, as these petals curl, you know, they've got a cool note as they curl. And I, I will try to pull in some of those. Um, let's see. As they curl in, that's pretty dark. It blends with what I've got on there already. Um, Okay, that feels pretty good. I've got this little bud here. What's happening over here? These neutral pieces, and I happened when I found this piece, you know, I, it's like this is exactly the co right color for just blocking this whole thing in, in one solid piece with a little light happening here, being caught here, and then this, the edge of this petal. I'm not sure what I'm gonna, else I'm gonna do here, but I really, really, really wanna move fast. I've got a little red rose here, and I've got one here, or I should say a pink, a dark pink. Now, now let's move on to, um, this luscious red beauty here. Um, and you know, when painting red, it's it's easy for it to become very dominant. And um, because, you know, we're, our eyes are drawn to red and, and I guess, you know, I, to me, this is such a strong counter uh, focal point, but this as a counterpoint is, is maybe really great. So, I see some, some, what do I see? I see some a blue violet back there, I don't know why. Probably because I was looking at the yellow rose and it made me think blue violet. Okay, um, the other thing here is that I know what this is, but I'm, I'm also not seeing a lot of, you know, it looks kind of like a jumble of petals. Uh, nothing wrong with that. It's just that you want to make sure that what your viewer sees is is believable, and and it reads, "Aha, that's a that's a red rose." Now, same same as anything. When this comes out into the light, there's a lot of cool notes here. So the center is very warm. It comes out out into the light, and it's very cool. Where else do I see that cool? It's up here. Um, a little bit something back to edges. I want this, some of these edges here to be absolutely razor sharp. Razor sharp. 
maybe over here the edge of that table is actually goes way back there um and for now i'm not going to think about the background for the moment but um except to put in the note of value that i see um Okay, this is a little bit, um, boy, this rose is so huge. It's so unbelievably huge that, um, you know, it's kind of spilling out everywhere and I have to be judicious and that's a little too brown, be judicious in what I show. There's also where it catches the light back here. There's a bit of, there's really some nice um, sparkle, some nice warm notes here, even, on the edge of one of those cool petals. Um, and the other thing that's interesting is, and I'm, I just spontaneously grabbed it, but I'm gonna go with it because it's a nice compliment. The, the edge of this back here, um, to define the form is very significant. And you know, this has, this in the background has violets, it has brown, it, you know, as long as it's a dark neutral, it's just fine. You know, I don't have form called rose telling me what it's supposed to be. So I have to do a little bit of in, inventing here. This squared off edge is what I see, but it's not very appealing. Let me see if I just lose it completely into the background. And then um, let's pull up some nice, uh, I'll be able to reconcile that as I go along. Um, carving under here with a nice warm. This has that same nice warm right in the center. You know, if I painted that rose um, as my focal point and it was a one-off, it's the only thing you, your mind would see. So I positioned it in a place such that it's present, but it um, doesn't overly dominate. Okay, uh, let's go back to um, pulling in some greens here. And there's one here. And actually that's kind of a, there's a green there, a nice green leaf there. There's another one here. And you know, sometimes it helps to get rid of extra leaves because, um, you know, nothing says you have to have them there and too many can be a little bit um, distracting. And, uh, but it is a good exercise. Pick one that speaks to you and subdue the rest. This has kind of a nice outline to it because it, the, Okay, what's happening here? Um, okay, let's move on to, that could be a whole lot darker in here. Really dark. And in the case of leaves, um, you can make them a little cooler, but even so, a pop of a uh, Terry Ludwig eggplant um, really, works to create a feeling of depth and richness. So, okay, moving on here. You know, this is catching the light relative to this. And so since this, this um, light is coming over, 
you know, maybe I really, I want to try to get the feeling of some of that light over here. You know, light here. You know, the light's traveling through this and it pops in right here, which we put before and before and it kind of went away on us. Um, but it, it helps and boy, right down here in the vase itself, you really get a sense of the light coming through. I'm going to work on this vase just a little bit and, um, show you how I go about, you know, developing it. I'm really squinting down big time. And, you know, uh, as things fade and move, I've covered up stuff that I was able to see before. Um, you know, the back of this, uh, um, the, the, the fold in the cloth, etc. But, you know, just strike, strike the, the averages here. Just use what you see as a, I'm going to warm this up a little bit. I see some nice warms happening here. Okay. Uh, there's also some nice rich greens in here. And if you can imagine, um, there's a stem and it's being covered by some other leaves right now. Um, but because I've learned over time what light does, and I also know that um, this sort of, let's see, there's some dark greens in here. Uh, you know, nobody's gonna look at this and take out a measuring stick and say that, you know, I didn't get the stem in the right place. I can, I can put in what feels right relative to my setup. Okay, let's work on the vase a little bit. Um, there's a lot of, because of the cast shadows behind, there's a lot of blue coming through. There's this blue rim here. Um, the light has changed. Um, does it work to my benefit or detriment? It doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna, and I, I kind of like that, the way that edge is created there. You know, where can I lose, um, where can I lose an edge? And that's a good color. I'm going to get that in there. You know, you'll have a, you'll develop a visual memory. So when you put a color down, you'll go, oh, wow, I know exactly where I want to put that. Um, This light comes through here like this, and I love running those together. Let's see. Squinting a lot, a lot. And this is a, this is a little warm, so let me cool it down a little bit. Um, and then come back. Let's get some darks. Where else are some darks? They're back here. Mostly it's, um, some lighter blues and kind of bluey green back here. lighter and there's one stem if you can find a stem or two to kind of define um, the transparency that that helps you know this has got a couple of leaves coming off of it there's a shadow side and a light side
there's some um, light shining through in the back here, which is kind of nice. Some real nice bright pieces here. There's um, like a warm light back here. Some nice warms. Uh, let's see. There's a couple of real dark leaves here. Whoopsie, that's wrong. That's okay. Let's get some dark leaves. Where's the water line? I don't really, it, you know, I've got this thing so full, there's no water line. Um, that can be, that can be kind of fun to paint it. Um, just paint what you see. You know, it's got and it will really change uh, the waterline and the the ellipse will really change based on um, on you know your perspective. Um, okay, let's do. There's a real kind of a nice aqua here. Where else can I put that? It's kind of kind of over here. Let's get that, pop that one real strong. You know, everything else has to be modulated so that this highlight is really bright. And that requires a tremendous amount of adding, subtracting, adding, subtracting, adding, subtracting. Until it just feels like you've got that sparkle of light. Okay, where am I gonna go next in this? Let's go over here, pull this guy out. Nice um, leaf form here. I've got a nice um, hard pastel in my hand right now. Um, I've also got some nice little, little linear things coming out here. This new pastel that's very hard, um, it it's really great. The dark, it's a it's a dark. Okay, this is going to require. We'll we'll do a little um, bit of drawing here. Now I have some stuff back here that I want to get rid of. So I'm just going to go over it with a harder pastel, make it my background. And also where can I lose some of that edge? Because I want um, some poetry. And on that note, this, the bottom of this really has some, a little warmer than what I made it. And then uh, the stem comes down here. Uh, okay, back to this one. Very yellow in the middle. I think this is a Sennelier, or a, uh, yeah, a Sennelier. And while I'm looking at it, I really like that little, that little, um, and make this. This is kind of a nice little thing that I just, out of my peripheral vision, I'm going to um, make sure that that gets its proper due. It's kind of a nice yellow, so I want to use it there. Where else can I use it? Over here, where I was working. Okay, that it's very it's a very complex little piece, but just capture the feeling of it. Just kind of uh, go in there and just you know get get a sense of the feeling of it. And there should be. I'm going to take off some of this pigment because there's a lot of it, and carve around it. Oh, 
Okay. Um, I seem to I seem to not want to focus on this, but I will because I keep seeing other things. Again, I'm not doing a portrait of this flower. I'm capturing the feeling about it. I really want to make sure that I've attached this rose to something in there. Um, I've left this, I'll try to block this in. And this, okay, I see some of this pink. Where, where do I see it? Right in there. And I really wanna come in and get a nice, because I'm still thinking about the light, the edge of the light. It's a little too cool, but I really want the feeling of the movement of the light through this thing. A lot of cools, probably, uh, you know, I, I always, you really want to look for um, where you can put in uh, warm, cool transitions. a little little pink um, camellia back here that I kind of lost Let's see if I can restate that and that's too strong so I'm gonna and I, I really want the, the the cool note in there I like the dark there yeah. you know what's happening over here oh it's the edge of this red rose that um, Okay, well, the red rose really wants to make itself known, so let's just make sure that I get a sense of its scale back there. Okay, now what? Um, let's get this one up here. Center is very red. And the little leaf thing is very obvious. And boy, there's quite a lot of pink. Needs to be lighter. Um, oh, interestingly, as this rolls in, there's a kind of a green right here, lime green. And you know, you have to ask yourself if, if I'm dealing with this changing light and, and all of, um, you know, this, these, uh, the wind and everything, it's, once you start painting outside like this and painting, you know, what, what you see and, and letting nature tell you what it, what it wants, it's um, honestly the most thrilling experience that I can think of. You know, that's back. Um, I need to create, be a little bit more deliberate about the cup shape here, which happens to be yellow. It's orange right up here.
a little bit more richer pink here. I lost, kind of lost the lime green that I see sometimes. There we go. Now, now it's just starting to, to work a little bit better. And I really want some, a pop of a really, really strong, um, rich, vibrant pink red. And the question is, that's, you know, the light is warm, getting warmer. Um, it needs to be quite a bit stronger. Um, I'm going to take a little pause. Um, and come back to this. So stay tuned. I really want this um, light, these sunlit elements to pop. And in that domain, I really don't want <clears throat> this to be a completely solid background. I want there to be something back here, and I can see it up here, that catches the light, that conveys a feeling of the, the sparkle uh, of light. So even though I'm feeling, filling this in fairly dark, um, I really want that feeling of, of delicious, rich light. what's happening down here I'm gonna put I think some there's some green leaves oops that's too light it's a little too blue but it's at least that's dark maybe as a foil there. And there's some um, vivid, we've got some little purple flowers here. Let me take some of that and, and there's actually some over here. Take some of that this way. Let's get some nice warm notes here. feeling of light bouncing around. Okay, I'm going to do this little perfume bottle here um, and begin to, to wrap this up because I am just about Out of the the light that I need um, but I haven't you know quite a lot to work from here to finish it I'm 
And let me go back to the color that I used for that cast shadow that's now buried with a lot of stuff. It's got this little stopper in it. Um, and let's see, what else? The cloth actually comes down and bisects it pops up, which means that um, this table back here is really, um, or the, there's a cast shadow on the table that's coming in. Let's create a little bit of movement. I'm going to, um, just to make sure I'm bringing this back, I'm going to, um, pull that around. Where can I lose some edges here? You know, what does the edge look like as it touches the table? It's going to be darker, cooler as it comes out into the light. There's a rim right here, this round um, surface here. This background shadow, quite a bit darker than I have it. There we go. And there's the edge of that cloth just painting what I see, you know, the edge of that cloth comes up like that. Part of the distortion when you're looking through something. Very light here, very light here, very light here. On the stopper, it's really light here. arches around the sky. It's got some of these real strong darks down here on the base. And this is pretty dark here. There's also this ribbon. And uh, it gives a nice um, lyrical element in it. it touches here, kind of blocks the shadow, but it, it does add a nice um, lyrical element. It's really dark here, and it gets really skinny, wide, kind of dark here. It goes up over the fold of the cloth, which wasn't there before. Might be kind of nice to put that in because it just adds a little bit of interest. Pretty light. I'm going to grab see if I can find a light, nice light in my box over here, a nice warm light. Squinting down, you know, what's the, what is the value? Pretty dark there. Comes over the cloth, it gets really dark as it comes out to the light, it gets white, um, dark again, or it gets lighter and then it rolls dark. The top of this fold is warm. Casts a nice shadow. The, 
the uh, ribbon cast a shadow too. Like that. Okay, let's see. Nice strong light down here. Just like on the other side. Okay, I'm gonna do just a little bit more on this um, and call it good because I'm out of light and um, You can see that, um, you know, I, I did a little bit of work in the background here just to, so I could go quickly to show you how I'd, I'd like to finish this. You know, why have that in the background? It's because I want to create some movement back here and a little bit of uh, visual interest back to this. It's got that nice little stopper that happens to be mostly blue, aqua. It's got quite a bit of blue here, quite a bit of blue here, quite a bit of blue down here. Um, I'm going to rub out a bit of the pigment here so that I can strike a nice, strong sparkle down here, hopefully with a clean finger next time. Don't want to overdo this. There's some nice light over here. Um, because this is in the background, I don't want to do too much, but I do want to create a feeling of a little bit of form. And most importantly, I want to create this feeling of some light pieces back here. Just creating a little bit of a visual interest that kind of unifies um, what we have going. This part where it turns points up to the sky is cool is cooler there's a little purple flower right here there's a little bit over here let's put some over here um, this kind of got a little bit as I was making sure that my background was the tabletop was very well defined. I ended up kind of losing some of that. Create a little bit of a glow. Let's get this light side back. Things have opened up since I've laid them on the table and cut them. A little light in here, quite a lot of a sparkle in here. I'm breaking up some of the lines here. Um, let's put some little purple flowers here. Oh, I know, the uh, red ribbon um, has really kind of moved around here, blown around despite my tape. You know, I, I have to ask myself, do I do I want it in there? It, it I kind of do, I guess. I can always take it out. 
it is casting some nice shadows too. Comes up here and down toward me and then over. Um, and so now let's go in and cast some shadows. There's a shadow here. Here's the shadow of the the wine or the uh, perfume bottle. Must be time for wine if I'm Okay, and then there's also the cast shadow here, and then it also is very pronounced right here. There's some nice warm sparkle in here. This is dark, dark here, where it faces the light warmer comes around and is dark and then it goes back into faces away from the light here oops that was wrong let's do it this way there It's kind of it's kind of nice actually. Let's for the sake of a nice linear element, let's put in a couple of stems. Keeps drawing the eye in, keeping in mind. There are shadows cast by those as well. And also let's make sure that we get a little, I'm not sure what color that is. Something I grabbed errantly. Let's put a little leaf shape in there. which of course will have a feeling of a cast shadow. Let me go in here and kind of refine this, make, create a little bit more form little bit of a glow here. I want that to stay back in shadow. Which it will. And a couple more little marks. Oopsie, I've got one thing that got a flower floating around out here. down in here. Really, really, really bright right here. Okay, 
I think that's about it. And um, th at this point, I would take it to my studio and let it incubate um, for a few days. And I, I may decide to leave this as a um, an etude, a color etude, um, which is not at all unlike um, a study in piano where where people uh, play pianists play scales for practice, and that's one of the most important things about um, this exercise is that um, it's about education and. Uh, you know, basking in beauty, and um, and if it if it develops into a final painting, great. If it does not, then uh, you have learned a tremendous amount about the way light works. And um, the next time you paint, you t uh, you've internalized all that knowledge, and um, your next painting will be even better. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, set up and it's, the color is really bad, but um, it gives me enough data to, to work from to uh, flesh this out a little bit better. Create a little bit more um, uh, form. And, um, and you know, the painting goes super slow at this point. I mean, we're talking about make a mark, stand back, make a mark, stand back, which in this case I'm not doing because I'm sitting here with you. I really want to get a little bit um, more definition um, and detail in the, in the middle of, of the rose here because this is my focal point so um, you know does it does it say enough now I can flesh it out a little bit and of course there's all this um, as the form turns Up here, there's some of these these little pieces here. And you know, it's it's this is all taking this to the to this next level is all um, you know really You know, personal preference. It, I, you know, I could have said that it was fine, exactly the way it was, but I, I really want to fill in a little bit more here. And also, I felt that the edges here got a little bit too soft. too way too dark that's okay I'll cover it up and then um, I really want to build in a little bit more detail here given a greater sense of three-dimensionality to that I've started to flesh out some details here stronger edges here um, Worked this edge a little bit, put some light up here, worked some thin little stems here, um, adjusted the shadow a little bit right here. You know, all of these refinements take a tremendous amount of time, um, and I'll need to let this incubate for a while 
before I call it finished, but uh, working this outside in the sunlight has taught me what the you know, more about the beauty of natural light. Um, and nature gives me all the color and value shifts and atmosphere and subtlety than I could ever conjure up on my own. And when I do finally decide this is finished, um, I've at least started from a good foundation of learning what natural light is teaching me. One thing that is bothering me yet about this is this parallel line here with the ribbon parallel to the bottom and I really feel that I need to break that up. So maybe I'll end up adding a stem over this at some point. But um, for now, I've got good information to think about finishing it. Thanks for joining me.